So we got a whole lot of more stuff going, and I watched Becky making something and thought you. Um, I'm probably gonna go on and off live all day today and random things when I'm standing around and we're in between bigger stuff. So what we've got here um, is some cheesecloth. Uh, we took this cheesecloth, we painted it with latex. We basically just took some of our slush latex and gave it a light brush paint job. So it's a whole lot better than cheesecloth now because it's like giving it some consistency. It's more than cloth. Um, and then what Becky's doing is taking a razor blade and ripping it into lots of pieces to make it ripped up and shredded. Um, I'll kind of show you what we're going with. Some of the things we're going to make out of it. Um, we've got a uh, pile of stuff we're going to do today because um, we're adding this onto our booth for some decor. Um, these are pieces of jute netting that uh, have been coated and dipped in latex, then hung to dry, so they get a whole lot more vining. We got pieces of cheesecloth that we latex coated. These are more strippy pieces, and we dip them in some blood and stuff, they work. Um, and then uh, make a whole another couple dozen or something. Um, out of the cloth up there and we end up with lots of piles so we've got a chunk that we've done this to and just kind of piled up and we do it here some fresh jute netting which for those who don't know are you generally use for coconuts they hang them to catch the coconuts when they knock them out of trees and we buy it in piles for making cool creepy dead things should be dipping in a sec, so perfect. <coughs> oh, I gotta find a clear spot to put it there. Yeah, yeah, I'll move the um, head we've got in the swing. Um, maybe we Corey to come do the base rust coat on this. You're out of camera, you're fine. Hey, Corey, you want to in a few? Grab that left thing. Danny found the camera, I see. <laughs> Yay. All right. Um, <coughs> should we just raise this up or move it? Or just, I can take it out of here. What am I talking about? It's plastic. Yeah, the rest that's left we can do in, uh, on the ground. So the upside of doing the really awesome, crazy, sex swing way of rotor casting is it works. The downside is it's not as perfect as an actual rotor casting. Um, go flip, turn around and show the camera what we got inside there. So we slush rotor cast it, and that's now a hard piece of plastic. There's a little chunk in the mouth that we want to make sure we get filled up that I think it was filled the wrong way and we'll thicken up the edge and add a little more layer to it. Um, but we can do that by hand in smaller batches. So just set it somewhere, we'll come back to that. And let me put the uh, love swing back up in the sky where it's out of our way. Bungee cord the little bugger up. There we go. Oh, fail. There we go. Let me hang some strips. These are all drop these. Oh, no, I'm trying to okay. Alright. We're gonna peel jute and show you guys how to peel jute. Um, I'm gonna do a five gallon bucket one Danny, wanna grab a five gallon? So we have love hate relationships with jute. I'm we, It's like we all sneeze and itch and it sucks and it's horrible and it looks so awesome. We buy it in pallet bowls. Our places have used it for webbing. Yeah, webbing. For background detail in seams. Um, in this case, though, the little ones of our jute for what we're doing, 
kind of suck. So I'm going to peel them out and unwind some of this. So I can use it for... It don't matter. Bring it, I'll use it. Not to use it. I'm just making sure I get the bottom one off uncut, and I can cut pieces out. Don't you break all that blinding. Yeah, John, you're right, Jude. We've all fought Jude one too many times. Hey, Aiden. I think your husband's bored. He's watching me on video. She's got her headphones in. She came She's back there jamming. She's back there jamming, working on some wings. But I'm allowed to make fun of you a little bit, John. Yeah, horror stories of this stuff. We all are aware of this. Okay. Should be able to start peeling pieces out. Um, I missed one or two. Yeah, there's not one. And now I've got some awesome rope strings that once we dip in latex and hang to dry. It means our shop's going to have hundreds of these hanging all over the place in a little while. But it's also going to get us the look we want. So it's an easy way to do it. gonna, uh, let, unless you want me to do it, I don't care, I know how I am with colors. He'll do it real quick, I'll move this camera in just a sec while he's getting set, and he's gonna rush up and give it a base rust uh, on the boiler pipe pieces. So, as soon as I get this hand pulled out, I have somewhere to put it. Wherever you want. Wherever you want, I'll put the camera up above so people can watch. Okay. So you can kind of go anywhere you want. Let me move you guys, we'll let, uh, I'll switch it over here if I can get this camera to go right. It should. And then Corey, you should be able to see, they can see everything you're doing. Cool. So if you paint like this, they got a perfect view. Um, and then after that paint dries, we'll come back and do rusting. Sweet. Here, wait, you might be able to use the scope to go. Nope, too high. A duct tape too? That'll work. I pin it in enough so you guys can see it. So I got my four colors here. I've got like kind of a brown, a uh, brownish red, and then a bright orange. And those are going to be my rough colors. And then I've got this color I call iron, which is kind of a brownish dark gray. And I'm going to use that to kind of blend together these three. First color I'm going to use is a brown. I'm using one of these sponges. Uh, you can get them at Hobby Lobby or a big store. I think they're like five bucks for three of them. And I get just a little tiny bit on my sponge and wherever I want rust to be. I'm just taking and dabbing it. And you kind of have to work quick because if your paint dries while you're doing this, then you have no way to blend them. It's all working kind of small patches here. Alright, 
So I've got my brown dough. And I'm going to break it up with some of that iron color that I mentioned. Peeling Judah parts, we have strings, they have light bulbs. Okay. I've got a bucket of water here close by, so I can dip my sponge in there and kind of get the colors I'm not using out of it. Next after the brown, we're gonna go with anywhere we have that kind of brownish red color, and we want to go pretty light with it. So if we do too much, then we're gonna completely get rid of the brown. So I'm just gonna kind of just pounce on it just a little bit, just to add some red tones into the brown. Bright, kind of yellow orange. And I only have like just a teeny tiny bit on my sponge. And I'm just going to put that in a couple spots. And then go back with part of my sponge that doesn't have the orange paint on it. And blend in what I've got. Of course, you could use rust paint to get this kind of a finish, and it'd be a lot easier. But if for some reason yours, like ours, is hardened, <laughs> or you just ran out of it, this is a quick and easy way to do a decent rust job on your props. When I'm going through with the orange, I try to do a couple spots that are fairly bright. Uh, I just like the way it looks better. It looks more like rust when you have a couple spots that are very bright and some that are dark and muddy. In the bright orange, that's dry that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the bright orange will dry a little bit less bright than what this is. So 
So there's how that looks. And we're going to go over it with some regular uh, rust paint too. They can actually see pretty good on that camera even at that distance. Oh really? Yeah. If you look up and you can see, the, and it's not like light yeah, reflected funny. Yeah. Still shiny. We can, wet, well, we, can, we can do this too. Um, if I, I can get it to zoom in. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> Alright, that piece is done. Huh? And when we add a little brutal rust on it later, it's gonna even... All that base is gonna underlie it, and it's gonna look even more intense, especially on the areas where we don't do as much of a brutal rust or an actual rusted thing to it. I'm gonna hit some of that side too in the other bolt. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's the four pieces. Little happy rust. Stop <laughs> rust. <coughs> Three points, there goes my phone yet again. <laughs> I think we dropped you guys, are you okay? Apparently that yeah. phone does not like the magnet on the damn back. Bonus, the screen didn't crack, so. Yay, because last time I cracked my phone. Wow, all right, let's switch it back over to the. Yeah, they got to see it once, up close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. I wonder how many people jumped when we did that. <laughs> so I'm trying to zoom this back to normal. There we go. The magnet is still on the ceiling. Hmm. Oh, so it came off of the phone. Yeah. What is it like sticky? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna epoxy the motherfucker on. Yeah. <coughs> I got latex all over myself when I forced that last one. I got scared. Of I jumped. I don't always do this, but sometimes I'll put the iron color on first and get a nice wet um, base so that I don't have to go as fast with my other colors. I can just kind of take my time. And personally, I like the texture that the sponge gives in the paint all over it. It's a little bit more rusted looking to me. And we're going back with the brown. Some happy red rust in there. Happy red rust! My 
I think someone asked you a question after. Oh, they dropped us. Let me see. John, ask the question then. What does he say? He raised his hand. Oh. He didn't ask his question. Yes, okay. He's like a student. He thinks this is class or something. I don't know what he thinks. We're not the formal. We're not formal, dude. We're not formal at all. <laughs> Burnt yellow! Burnt yellow! Or orange or whatever, you know. <laughs> I don't know what day it is or what color it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sriracha Saturday. That's Ooh. my favorite, yes. We got some in the fridge. Should we do Chinese buffet for dinner? Do we have a Chinese buffet right? Or are those the one that's the Walmart? Here? It's actually pretty, it's pretty decent. No, the Walmart in New Cup we go, are we? Oh, I'm, I'm, I was talking about the one by the Walmart neighborhood thing, uh, oh, the Hibachi Grill. Oh, okay, that was so bad, So on this one, since I did the, uh, yeah, was kind of funky. Um, since I did that iron color before, I did the uh, rest of the colors. It's a little bit more subdued than the other one. So it just depends on what you're going for, where this is more brighter colors. This is just a little bit more subtle. So if you had a scene that was lit pretty well, you could go with the subtle one. One that's darker, I would go with the really bright orange, and I'd put it on pretty heavy if it's dark. But anyway, that's how I do basic rust paint. So I'll give the phone back to Rich here. Uh, my my phone my phone is now painted beautifully. Yeah, I'll change it for you later. Oh, <laughs> he, we we we. He, we asked if he jumped, and he raised his hand and said, I did. Oh. Yeah, that's what he was. Let's see if we missed any other questions during that real quick. I also jumped. Yep, Me? okay. Me too. Yeah, we all, so did I. All right. So I'm switching oh. us back over to oh, the old fashioned. Oh, did you press that latex in my hair? However, release the space. Oops. Take it out. I use it to get Look at that, it's switching back and forth. <laughs> Apparently with the magnet on this other clippy thing, it decides to do a lot of strange things. Okay, so I thought you guys would, wait, I'm going to do another batch. Danny's got more. Uh... So you guys can see what we're doing. Thanks, Joey. No problem. So while he was doing that, we were ripping jute netting apart. So now I have lots of strings. And we're literally just taking a five gallon bucket of latex. So is the or video stuff we have Almost. Almost there. We're just kind of dipping it in. Getting it coated and getting all the extra off. That way it gets nice and coated. Sometimes we do singles, sometimes we do blocks of three or four or five of these. Kind of depends on what we're trying to do with it. Um, up and around again, stupid thing. Everybody's seasick. Yeah, you all get like seasick and it's and it's not very impressive if you can't watch. It's not very impressive. That's what happens. After we finish this video and I we take another break out and up there it goes again. 
Um, I'll fix my magnet. All right, I'm done with that. That was annoying. Let's see if I can find another band-aid way to put this up for a sec. Give me a second. Yeah. There we go. For now. Um. Oof. Sorry, that was annoying, everyone. All right, so we're just dipping this in the bucket, scraping off the extra, and taking that piece either as a group, as a bundle, or as singles, if we want to do it as singles. This one has four in it. Um, and uh, go hang those and hang pieces so we can use them for webbing and stuff. The using them as latex uh, does a whole lot better for decor for us than just the jute, you know, because that cloth doesn't have enough oomph, doesn't take enough paint. So, yeah, I'm getting latex coated in this. This one I'll split into singles just so you can see. Let me go hang that chunk up. Our shop has drywall screws sticking out of walls and corners and every area we can find where we're going to hang stuff. We've got overhead hooks and racks and you need it to have that many places and things to do, so back we go. Uh, paint the shelves, the steps. Yeah. All right, we'll be over a second. We're gonna we'll come back after I do this. We're gonna go finish the uh, steps, steps, back, top, side, everything that doesn't have foam on it. Okay. It's getting painted black. <laughs> Actually, Corey, you might, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey might have it in uh, one of those drawers yeah. in the paint pod. A uh, couple of paint pans and rollers and whatnot. Yeah, we just stashed them away. Ooh, that's a walk around way. Yeah, I got a couple more batches of this. I'm going to start doing a couple of blocks of bigger chunks. All it really means is I've Ruined another pair of pants. That's it. We'll let it dry and later today or tomorrow morning, probably tomorrow morning, because the weather will have a bunch of good decor stuff to put over areas. I'm gonna kind of split the end. on the ground. I'll show you guys when I take these gloves off how to, uh, how we're hanging all these so you can see it. pieces wherever we can find a screw to hold it up. Just put a couple good single ones. The arm hair off my arm, awesome.
workbench. That'll give me enough for what we're doing with it. show you guys what we're doing really doing was literally taking that bucket of latex and just dipping the stuff in hence the mess that is now everywhere because that's how it works and then we're literally just hanging this stuff everywhere we got three room poles the proper room back there it's just got them on every hook all these spots have hood screws in it um, this is the cheesecloth dip in latex that we're just kind of shredding down. Um, and once we add blood and stuff, it comes out awesome. And it also get a little foam. Get a little foam. This boiler pipes, even though we haven't gone through and does done metal shavings and stuff, has a good rust coating as it is. I'm impressed. Um, you do those in the seam, you start looking really awesome. And uh, that's about it um, for the moment. Yep, set dressings. Alright, so if I missed any other question. Yeah, jute. Chris, you asked what is jute. It's uh, used for decoration a lot, um, at least in the haunted house world. But it's, I believe, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was originally in the this. We got it in a bucket, but it's it's about three foot wide and in chunks of like a hundred foot long, and it's used for coconuts. So they drop the coconuts out of the tree and hits the jute netting, and that's how they gather it and ship coconuts. And ironically, jute netting is made out of coconut husks. Yeah, so the jute netting is made out of coconut husks too, um, and there's a whole lot to have to do with it. And what's our favorite thing to make? A mess. A mess. Let's go with a mess now. Dead bloody stuff. We're kind of we do a lot of gore, so dead bloody things. Um, decors, haunted house scenes, you name it, we like to make it. Um, we like stuff we have to sculpt or mold or make lots of copies of and have fun with. That's about as interesting as I can say it. Is it's cool? If it's interesting and unique, we like to do it. We try not to do stuff that everyone else is doing, but whatever strikes our fancy. We're prop makers, so in a way we're all crazy artists and we just decide what sounds fun and we in turn go make it. That's really all we do. Um, so I really don't know that I have an absolute favorite. I just have a favorite thing to do. Right now. <laughs> yeah, for today. Um, uh, Austin, yes, although... Uh, I'm going to probably not do that today's video, but we'll definitely do some. You're going to see some of what we're doing here when I come back later today. Um, we'll do a whole bunch of really gory stuff. We're prepping a bunch of it now um, for things. So when you guys see that later, you'll see a whole lot of really cool gory stuff later. And so we'll, uh, I'm going to take that. Could be painted for vines. Dave, absolutely. Jute netting is fantastic for vines. Um, doing it in particular in latex now makes it a whole lot outdoor uh, vines, spider vines webs. spider webs, guts. We've used them for intestines and things like that. Um, yeah, she was working on a hammer in the back, John. Yep, she got it coated. We're letting it dry. But uh, yeah, guts, spider webs, vines, netting, tangling. Um, can be used as edges of trees, it can get used for gore piles, it can get used... Any sinewy yeah, detail you want. Anything you want sinew. 
If you want something sinew-like, it'll do it. So you can use it honestly as an attachment to and, and use the netting on bones to build muscular structures. It takes a little more work, but it's doable. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what other things we have around. Man, you can use it for a whole lot of things. And that's why we like jute, is it's used for a lot. We've even taken jute without the latex and just laid it up down on uh, handrails, and it looks like just swamp vines, and it doesn't take any more work. Um, yes, you absolutely could make masks out of it. People add them onto masks, and uh, they add the latex-coated jute on top of burlap masks, usually. Um, and that would do it. I, I Jute just sucks, because a lot of us, it's got itchy stuff, because I don't like coconut. Um, but if you were using it to attach onto something else, absolutely. Do we make Narnies? What's a Narnie? Michael, you got me curious. Or Mitchell, you got me curious. What's a Narnie? Uh, I have no idea what a Narnie is. Is that like a Narnia monster? Because I'd like to make a Narnia monster. We could do it after we do the dragon. That'd be kind of fun. Narnies are dried latex on glass. Um, I've never heard that phrase. No. Dried latex on glass in like used to simulate sinew. Oh, okay. That's just a term we've never used. They're, you're doing latex paintings on glass to yeah, create yeah, sinews. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. We do it on st we do it on plastic. stainless steel or plastic. Or plastic. We, um, we don't. I don't like to have glass around because I'm clumsy. And Becky's clumsy, and we're all clumsy. So we do them on, you can make them on stainless steel because it pops off just as good. Um, but yeah, you could absolutely do that. Um, he said the same thing. Uh, yeah, we do a bunch of that. I've just never heard it called a Narnie before. Huh, new term. All right. Wi-Fi sucks, probably because I'm killing all of it. Uh, I'm probably not even on Wi-Fi anymore. Um, all right, well, I guess... Uh, Best place to get bulk latex. Um, Dave, if you're talking bulk latex in the 5 to Us. 55 gallons, we have it. Um, it's actually getting it launched up on the website pretty soon. We sell and use so much latex. We're buying two, three, four, five, fifty-five 55 gallon drums at a time. Um, so we have a lot in stock. Um, we have both the slush latex or the casting latex where you almost have to trowel it. Um, no, this is more brushable. It's it's brushable, it trowelable. We can do it. Um, I don't want it. Oh, Mitchell, I got gotcha. you. Used under an appliance, thinner for jute. But yeah, um, it's it's going up. We we finally got our website really starting to work. So the the latex stuff. I think you can actually buy a drum of it on the website right now. I don't think I have it in five gallon buckets yet, but we do that as well. Um, but there's a lot of challenge to that. Is depending on where you live, so we can get it shipped to you. Um, it takes a freight and you know, lift docks and stuff, but we yeah, can, nearby, you, you know, if you're n anywhere near Louisville, you can come drive it in, save yourself a couple hundred bucks in shipping. Uh, but yeah, we do a ton of it and lots of different styles of latex. We go through a lot of it. Well, we just, we just had a couple of drums, half a dozen drums, just have a come with the other day. So we do a lot of latex. So I personally think I'm the best place. If you're in Atlanta, Engineer Guy has it. You can save on shipping. He's right around the corner. Um, Reynolds Aluminum, I think they're doing a casting latex as well. They're just only in a few cities. Um, really, the kick is buying it in volume. you got to buy a bunch. 55-gallon um, drums are pretty good, and you spend, depending on what shipping is, thirteen to 1500 or so for a drum. You're Pennsylvania. Yeah, you're, I can get it shipped to you um, and save you some money. Yeah. Drop me a message. Um, we'll figure out shipping and we can get you squared away. Um, Polytech doesn't do a good latex. They have Their latex is more for doing mold making, not for doing masks or other stuff. So their latex is great, it's a latex. but it's a moldable latex. It's not like a mask making or a casting latex. It doesn't work the same. We have some. We use it for stuff. It's just not the same. Um, yeah, it's more a filler latex. A lot of people use it for doing um, cement molds. I'm um, doing a cement mold. You want a real thick latex with lots and lots of coats. And depending on what you're making, um, you can use it in lieu of silicone. And you can use it in lieu of silicone and a bunch of other but, stuff. But um, we you know, we don't get into latex molding much because we don't do the cement and the heavier things that can benefit from it. Or And we don't do a lot of one-piece molds, we'll which is that. also another case latex works um, for the Polytech latex. Um, if you need it, we can get it for you. We just don't stock it. We'll have Polytech drop ship it to you. 
because um, you can order from us sometimes cheaper than you can get it direct. But uh, Mitchell, if you need some, let us know, or if uh, Dave, drop me a message. Anyway, all right, I'm going to probably go here for a bit, grab some food, um, go do a bunch more foam work on one of our walls, and then uh, we're going to be splaying rubber later, and probably resting these out later. We'll do a, add a bunch of this, these sinews onto things. Now we can do some of that later. Um, we got a couple of pretty good more things to watch later, so I'm going to try and be on and off and not just... I learned Facebook kicks me off after four hours anyway, so... I'll uh, just keep starting on and off videos all day for you guys who want to watch. Um, keep tabs, and uh, if you're not on my friends list, friend me, and uh, that way you get notifications when I'm doing it. So we'll chat with you guys soon. Have a good day.